talking briefly about the general rules and seismic action because we need that also to talk about buildings and then I will talk about uh, rules for new buildings. Now you see that on that second aspect, the delivery date is in April 2020, so it means it's not yet a completely steady finished uh, document. Now the general objectives in revision, as defined by SEM, are the document should have safe, provide safety, be clear, simple, easy to use, uh, give economical projects, adapted to European seismic context, technically updated, and not necessarily covering every possible type of problem. Now, of course, you can see there that there might be some discussions between uh, four of the objectives and safety. Some feature of the general part on uh, seismic action, so general rules and seismic action, um, one thing to mention is that in the revised Euro code, the uh, parameter to characterize the earthquake is no longer the PGA, but it's the maximum spectral acceleration. Um, so defined as S alpha F on the graph. Um, there is also a um, second point which is defined, which is uh, as beta f at one second period, so it's close to the definition in the American code, I would say. A uh, parameter for damping has been uh, revised. Um, there are different conse consequent classes considered, which uh, are defined by or used to define parameters, which may be different return periods or a multiplication coefficient which comes into the definition on the action with reference to the, the let's say, the one of reference, which is the action with a 14, 475 years return period. And the PGA is uh, defined as the maximum spectral acceleration divided by 2.5. Um, now, the horizontal elastic response spectrum is a product of three parameters, so, so the S alpha, which is at the backdrop level, and then there is the soil parameter, now named F alpha, and the topography parameter named FT, and a similar formula for S alpha and F beta. Uh, there is no longer two types of earthquake with different corner periods, DBT, CTD, and S, the thing is managed uh, differently. Uh, vertical elastic response spectra are also defined. There are multiplication of the horizontal one by a parameter. Uh, the values are given there. I will not comment. And there is this uh, table uh, of uh, topography influence on the design spectrum. The code provides peak values of ground motions in terms of PGA, PG's uh, speed and displacement. Uh, provides a relative displacement of two sides, the way to compute that. The range uh, for, of S alpha for different uh, soil side condition and the possibility to deduce a uh, magnitude which is uh, useful for ground liquefaction verifications and also the duration of the strong part of the ground motion. Uh, the code also provides, uh, let's say, explicit ways to define input motions for response history analysis. So the criteria to select and scale accelerogram to do such type of analysis. And the code also provides the definition of special model of the seismic action. <clears throat> um, now, performance requirements are unchanged. Uh, human life protective. Uh, damages limited. Civil protection operational. What is new is the definition of seismic action classes by means of a seismic action index S-delta which is basically the uh, 
response spectrum as alpha times the soil parameter times delta, which takes into account the consequent class of the construction. And uh, this value of S delta is used <coughs> to define table 4.1, in which there are seismic action classes from very low to high with the range of seismic action index. Now, as a rule, this uh, definition by numbers is a problem of safety, so this remains in the hand of the every country. And so, so it is a so-called NDP, which means uh, nationally determined parameters. So those values here. Uh, limit state and associated seismic actions. Now there are four limit state defined. Near collapse, significant damage, damage limitation, and operational. Uh, the new thing is that verification imposed in the code uh, generally are only at the significant damage state. Um, only those requirements are compulsory, but there may be additional limit state to be verified, and this is in the hands of the national annexes. Even if some chapters by material provide uh, the detailed indication on how to deal with calculation at uh, DL and at C and C limit states. Um, design verification principles, they are the classical ones. Avoid brittle failure, premature instable mechanisms, performance by strength capacity, sorry, uh, deformation capacity, energy dissipation capacity. Uh, force based calculation is, uh, let's say, the classical uh, daily method, but displacement based methods are also explained. And in the case of dissipation devices, it's an energy based method which is used. And the principle of capacity design, of course, is kept. Modeling, analysis, and verifications. Well, something new is that the behavior cap factor is now split into three components. So, namely, QS, QR, QD. Q is, QS if the overstrength due or reflects the overstrength due to material and sections and with a standard value equal to 1.5. QR represents the effect of plastic redistribution from the first plastic zone to the global plastic mechanism. So it's the uh, well-known alpha U over alpha 1, which exists in the present Eurocode 8. And QD reflects the displacement capacity up to the significant damage state. So this is done because it seems it is better adapted to different type of structures, type of sections, material behavior, etc. Uh, this is just to explain where stands the influence of these different <coughs> components of the behavior factor uh, once you draw the uh, pushover curve. So the effect of QS is to make you go from the design value to uh, the end of the uh, elastic behavior. QR represents the effect of the redistribution up to the maximum load called here in the graph VU. And then the effect of QD is what you get uh, by, uh, which is represented here. And uh, these are the different values relevant for different utility classes, uh, which will be used. So there is DC1, QR, QD equal 1.0, QS equal 1.5, DC2, QS equal 1.5, QR and QD may be greater than 1, and the same in DC3. Um, in the rules about the use of response spectrum methods, there is a new clause explicitly in the fact that as outputs uh, of model response combination are positive values, uh, one has to take care to make the appropriate combination of these outputs so that it doesn't uh, 
miss an unfavorable sign combination. Now this is well known from good designers, but might escape to the attention of uh, some people. Um, for nonlinear static analysis, there are explicit rules for lateral loads and how to make capacity curves, how to define an equivalent uh, single degree of freedom system, how to define the target displacement, how to idealize the force deformation curves of the dissipative zones, and the code will provide explicit data to model the uh, nonlinear behavior of uh, sections uh, so that you can run a pushover with information which is cost-based, so Eurocode aid based you don't need, again, to go to FEMA or other type of documents. Um, and for the verification to limit state, well, the rules for force-based are present, but there are also rules for displacement-based method at the different possible uh, limit states. And then there are quite a significant uh, number of pages about structures equipped with anti-seismic devices. So this is all in the general part, actions and uh, general rule of Eurocode 8, so the so-called part 1-1. Now, talking about part 1-2, well, there is a number of problems which are common to structures in all materials. Uh, and I will uh, successively go through these problems. They are the criteria of sensitivity to P delta effect parameter theta, definition of DC2, raising the level of seismic action for DC1, two specific problems, one about the mitigation of soft story failure in DC2, one about force amplification factor in DC2 and DC3, then there are new things about transfer zones, masonry frames, paddings, and partitions. And then there, is, there are new aspects in all chapters by material, and I will try to stress what is new in comparison to the present code. Uh, concerning this criterion about sensitivity to P delta effect, the parameter theta, so you have at present this definition uh, but with, so this in fact reflects thinking of project team two, uh, who has been asking for some modification in part one, which was not his job. Uh, so for this parameter, there were two claims. One was that P dot and V dot were not calculated considering the same masses in the structure. So P dot was the classical combination from Eurocode zero, I would say, and V dot was the shear at a given story with the seismic mass considered. So there is a difference in the parameter. One is with Psi to I and the other one is with Psi to I. So it's not consistent. And so it means also that you need to have two models to, ca to calculate with one P dot and the other one V dot. So we have claimed that uh, they sh this should be, let's say, clarified, and this is now implemented in part 1.1. One one. The second claim is about the, uh, uh, the value of V dot, which is here in the formula. Um, now, V dot is the design shear at the level under consideration, while uh, the displacement is the displacement at significant damage. So the displacement is here, but the shear which is considered in the expression is there. So they do not correspond to the same point. So uh, the claim was that uh, we need to, uh, let's say, unify that and have uh, values of uh, the uh, V dot which correspond to the significant damage state and not to the end of the elastic stage, not even the end, the design one. So DRSD is now equal to QS, QD, QR, D relative 
at uh, uh, at story E and VSD. This is the, the, the new thing is equal to QS QR V dot. This one. So that the expression for theta uh, should be that one and is now that one. Ductility classes. Well, uh, the SR comment, so SR is a systematic review of the nations on the current Eurocode 8. Uh, the comments were asking a number of things. Why not ask? And Christmas is approaching, so uh, one thing was to raise the action level for DCL. Limit was 0.1G. Um, then DCM, DCA, and DDIN were too expensive expensive, we should invent something in between uh, DCM and DCL. We should also give up with DCH for reinforced concrete because nobody is using it. So the, schematically, what was asked was to produce ductility classes which would behave, uh, by which a structure would behave in a a shear displacement diagram in, in the way indicated here. DC1 is stiffer, uh, more uh, resistant, but with less ductility. DC2 is less stiff, but more ductile. And DC3 is something like uh, DC8, DCM that we have now. Um, and uh, the idea was, or the, the wish, is to have a simplification in the criteria which I use for DC2, so this would make a more an economical project, but with uh, easy work for designers. Uh, and in particular, uh, we would apply their local capacity by local over strength, uh, deformation in energy dissipation capacity, but not uh, global criteria on the behavior, about the behavior of the structure. So the question was, uh, is this feasible? And uh, this uh, gave difficulties to the project team, I can tell you, to come out with something on, on that, uh, of that nature. And now DC3 would be somewhere a mix of DCM, DCM, H, depending on the material, the mix. Uh, and in such, in DC3, you would have a classical criteria for a global plastic mechanism. Uh, so some remarks, DC1, well, of course, maybe it's possible to raise the uh, seismic action limit, but not necessarily too high, because DC2 cost or extra cost is balanced by a greater Q factor, so the limit to DC1 promotes DC2, would promote DC2. Seismic action limit may be different for different structural types. And uh, also the fact that model analysis in any way requires for structures over a certain phase. DC2 Q factor may be different for different structural types. And DC3, well, this is what I already said. Uh, but in practice, it means that for reinforced concrete, DCH rules are deleted, while for steel and composite, uh, rules for DC and DCH are merged. They were basically of the same nature. Um, now, is this DC2 feasible? So one thing which was done was to compare uh, the rules in Eurocode 8 and uh, ASC 7, 10 or later. And so there are possibilities to do that uh, if you consider C consequent class 2 structure. Uh, they are equivalent to risk category 1, 2, 3. Uh, TSD 2 return period is uh, in 475 years in Eurocode 8. And so you have this type of graph where you compare the limits corresponding to required different or similar requirements. So no seismic check. Well, the limit 0.1G in Eurocode 8, 0.16 in ASC. The limit to no seismic requirement, which is ordinary structures, uh, 
uh, with local ductility in primary structure, while the limit uh, in ASC is about 0.5G, uh, 0.25G in S-delta, which is 0.1G uh, in uh, PGA. And then for DCA and DCH, well, the limit, there is no real limit. And the same with design category intermediate and special in ASC. So it means that indeed in the American code there is a design category similar to the intended ductility class 2. Uh, now as delta are greater indeed for this category than what is present in Eurocode 8. Now of course comparing that one has to take care that the correspondence is not immediate because the way to calculate uh, return period, etc., are different. Uh, this graph on the left shows the present way the rules are structured. So DCL, DCM, DCH with the values of Q and the type of requirements. So from no seismic rules to global plus local ductility rules above S delta equal 2.5 meter per square second. And the intended for the next generation would be with a raised level for DC1, equivalent to DCL, with local ductility rule Q equal 2.5 up to a certain acceleration level still to be defined. And then DC3 uh, is like today. Now, these are order of magnitude, the values indicated here, because you have to find, uh, to justify correct numbers. So there, what was done was uh, <coughs> trying to convert at best the information in ASCE 7. Um, and so, uh, did use or have a correspondence between force reduction factor R and behavior factor and the uh, design requirements per category and the design action and limit state to have something uh, consistent as a comparison. On design action, the uh, USA risk targeted maximum earthquake MCR maps give SD 5% dam, 2% probability of exceedance over 50 real periods, so it corresponds to a return period of 2 1,500 years. The design earthquake is Z1 divided by 1.5, which corresponds to a return period of 800 years. Uh, Eurocode is 475 for the FM1, so S delta is SDS divided by 1.2. And you can do the same type of uh, correspondence between Q and R. Uh, risk of collapse 1% in 50 year, return period, SDS is so, 1,600. You have to pass from that to that. So this gives you Q equal R divided by 1.5. Now, this is good to do so, but it's anyway, we know an approximation. But to, to see the order of magnitude, this is interesting. And uh, so we have done that. There is a number of tables, many pages of comparison, etc. To finally conclude that if we adopt a conversion of ASC 7 data, we can produce uh, tables of limits of S delta per structure type. For instance, this is what is at present in the draft. Uh, of Eurocode 8 for reinforced concrete structure. So you have DC1 at 2.5, so that 0.1 PGA for moment resisting frames, and 5 for walls, and 5, 7.5 in DC2, where there are ductility measures, and then no limit in DC3. Uh, now I mentioned that there would be specific problems. One is uh, to mitigate soft risk failures in DC2. So once you leave 
the weak beam strong column criteria in moment resisting frames, you have a problem. And uh, so at, at the start, no such criteria in DC2 uh, for MRFs. And also no damage limitation because in the current Eurocode, the uh, drift limit, uh, no, no drift limitation because in the existing Eurocode, the drift limitation is at uh, service earthquake. So if you just copy the data for the uh, significant damage, you have no drift limitation. So there has to be one. And then what is anyway foreseen is a limitation of p delta effects through the parameter theta, but you can wonder how correct is an intensory drift calculated as q times the uh, elastic in the intersory in the drift uh, once you go in yielding uh, in a soft story, because in such case the drift would in fact be the elastic part of the interstory drift, like here, plus a plastic, a plastic part of the roof displacement. If you imagine that on top of the story where you have the plastic hinges, the, the rest moves as a rigid body and you get the complete roof displacement at the soft story level. So there has to, something has to be done uh, to uh, mitigate the risk of uh, soft story failure in DC2. And as we have seen as project team, two ways to do so. One way is, uh, I would say, indirect, which is validation of a limitation of drift at SD up to a given seismic action S delta. And a direct way is a tentative to define a stability criteria for soft story plastic mechanism for any S delta. So both things have been done. Uh, concerning, let's say, the uh, calibration of drift and other design requirements we, we developed in the code, uh, there has been some uh, case studies, in particular the ones by uh, Landolfo Daniello, um, so the structure is there. As delta is the maximum we were thinking about for a uh, limit of DC2 for this type of structure. So moment resisting frame in steel. And uh, a number of design cases have been made, considering a drift limit at 2.5%. And uh, this, well, I will talk about this omega later on. And then every structure designed there would have been uh, submitted to pushover so that finally there can be a comparison and conclusion saying that uh, with a drift limit at 2.5% you don't have a soft story uh, for some amplification factor I will say what later on later uh, about that so if we accept this drift limit uh, it seems that there is a set of design rules which uh, mitigate the risk of soft story failure. Uh, as a case study was done on composite steel concrete moment resisting frames by uh, Lignos, uh, another member in PT2. Um, he had made a design case with a drift limit at 1.5% concluding that this was too much and could be increased up to, in, uh, up to 2 to 2.5%. Uh, so, conclusion, a limitation of grid at SD up to a given seismic action as delta may be an effective means to mitigate soft story failure. So the proposal in the draft at present for reinforced concrete is for instance this one. S delta 5 meter per square second and drift limit uh, 2%. Uh, one remark is that the limits of F delta may express sensitivity to soft story failure, so it means the limits of drift are not the same for moment resisting frames and for walls, and you, this is reflected in the tables. So this corresponds also to post-earthquake observations. 
Uh, another thing about mitigation of soft story was to consider uh, the uh, situation which is here uh, with uh, the different parameters there and uh, the hypothesis being that uh, the interstory drift at SD would be equal to the roof displacement and the other hypothesis is that the roof displacement in reality, so it means in elastoplastic behavior, is approximately the same as an elastic value calculated with Q equal 1. Um, soft story failure prevention would be found by the application of a stability condition in terms of virtual work. So the external work would be V times delta and the internal work, the uh, uh, work at the plastic hinge and the story in question. So this would give an expression like this. However, it's an approximation because delta in fact includes the elastic part of the deformation. So we should consider only the plastic part and apply virtual world for what is after the elastic part. Another reason to do so is that the data theta u available in Eurocode 8 part 3 are the plastic part of theta, not the total theta. So uh, this is what has been calculated. So you have for the external work something like here with an average value at 0.95 the uh, uh, maximum plastic strengths um, for the internal work so the plastic displacement would be du minus d1 which is here which is q d dot minus q as d dot theta u plastic is a part of theta but the code Eurocode a part three gives this theta at nc so near collapse stage so uh, we assume theta sd equal to 0.8 times theta u. And finally, uh, the virtual work relation uh, conclude in this expression. Uh, so in the present draft, this expression is uh, represented and is indicated in case you would like to apply DC2 type of design for uh, uh, seismic action value as delta greater than 5 meters per second square. Now, of course, there are two approximations in this expression. One on the action side is that, in fact, P delta is not included, and we might do it, and this uh, this is negative, I would say, and on the resistance side, where in fact strain hardening should be included, and this also is not difficult. So the, there might be an evolution of this expression which you find in the most recent part. A second problem is this matter of force amplification factor in DC2 and DC3. Uh, now, what is this about? Well, uh, the elastic analysis under earthquake gives action effect, moment, uh, normal force, shear, and the design combination are gravity plus the seismic action. And the design check are, uh, for instance, this one in a moment frame. Um, however, um, a first plastic hinge form where this ratio of design strength to act calculated action effect is greater than one, and then you have these alpha u and alpha one uh, now represented by the QR factor. And the question is, what happens between V1 and VU? What happens to the action effect in the other members? Uh, in fact, uh, the action effect, they increase because uh, dissipative elements are uh, go from not yet yielded state to yield, and non-dissipative elements, they follow as well. So is this taken into account when you would calculate like this, and is this important? Um, 
And there were strong claims that uh, it was like that and should remain like that. I will not insist on who claimed that, but uh, uh, so we had to struggle, <coughs> would you imagine, to express it. Um, so first comment is that in the current Eurocode, this problem is taken into account in the steel and composite chapters, uh, which we but even before that, in 1988, in the first uh, ECCS recommendation for steel design, there was something of this nature. So the formula you have now is that you have gravity, you have a calculated action effect, but increased by the ratio of uh, action effect, uh, sorry, strength to action effect, times a gamma over strength, which represent uh, something on uh, random material properties, and a factor of 1.1, which we could assimilate to uh, strain hardening. So this is present in steel and composite. However, it's not present at all in the chapter on reinforced concrete. Now, if we look back to the, uh, look also to ASC 7, you see there that there is a factor omega zero applied to M, N, and V. Uh, the way it's applied is defined uh, in specific material code. Uh, in ASC, for instance, omega zero is from 2 to 2.5 for moment resistive frame 3 and, and so on. So increase there and seems to be linked to system redundancy and overstrength by a kind of statistical factor. Um, so uh, to, let's say, have an agreement on uh, the existence of this overstrength factor, I would say to some extent, I'm uh, ashamed that we had to do so, but uh, it was like that. There, there are witnesses in the audience, at least one witness. Uh, well, what was done was to make some pushover and show that uh, what happens. Now, this is a, 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 a pushover by hand. Uh, you consider the structure. Uh, you have a kilogram of the... Uh, and, and the V1 forming plastic hinging uh, at the bottom, and you have the equation of e external equilibrium, which is here. So you have this, uh, and you find the actual force in the column there, which is this value. Now, once you increase V up to VU, well, you have no longer an increase in moment resisti resistance there, but the overturning moment which increases has to be taken by something. And this something is an increase more than proportional into actual forces in the cavern. And on this simple model, you can easily establish the expression, so the analytical expression of the overstrength coefficient. This is one. <coughs> the other one for shear which is just uh, proportional to the ratio of value to V1. And for moment, it's nothing, because once you have that, it's over. And if you do so, you find uh, values in this simple case of the famous omega factor. So this is 186, and depend on the uh, type of structures, the number of base of story, etc. And these values are not equal to 1.0, as this was claimed on the other side. The other way to do, which is much smarter, uh, to demonstrate that is just to do pushover, because there the truth is explicit. And you have, uh, again, and it is the same work by uh, Landolfo Daniello, uh, showing, <coughs> let's say, the increase in uh, between the first yield and the ultimate capacity, and with conclusion like this, the force amplification for actual forces in columns is around two, uh, and the practical way, uh, the output of practical output was that now we implement this overstrength factor in the code. 
in DC2, just factor of 2 on N. In DC3 for steel, it's all, for all the terms, there is this omega factor. Um, so the practical rule you see here, they are in the draft at present. Reinforced concrete, omega equal to 2 for N, steel and composite in DC2, like in concrete, with a value there depending on the type of structure, and steel and composite in DC3. The expression is here, but except for the change in symbol, this is in fact exactly the expressions which are at present existing in Eurocode 8. Gamma over strength has become gamma RM, gamma SH is for strain hardening, so it's the 1.1 or more, and omega D is uh, the uh, design over strength. Uh, one comment, one remark is that, uh, in fact, this type of amplification factor depends on which column you look at because the overturning moment is more taken by external column than internal. But anyway, for the sake of simplicity, we apply it to, to all uh, columns, um, and it has an influence. This is a graph on moment uh, actual force interaction in reinforced concrete. So the case, it, you would neglect the reality is the red uh, double arrow there, so there is First, a gravity plus plus or minus the uh, actual force due to overturning, and if you apply the uh, amplification, well, you have another double arrow line, which is the green one, and it may be that uh, applying the green one, you are outside the criteria of uh, strength in case of an interaction actual force moment, so the practical output is that you have to increase your uh, designed, your bending resistance. In steel, there is also an influence, but it's more on the compression side because of the failure types, which are local and global buckling of colors. <coughs> So this concludes, let's say, specific problems. Now I will uh, fly over uh, the new as the aspect and the new sections. There is a new section in Eurocode in the draft which is about transfer zones. So these are the zones of a building in which you change, you move from a structural system to another because, for instance, you need greater open space at the uh, ground level, and this kind of things. This was not at all treated in the current year code, <coughs> and so this is, this is uh, now explicit, explicit rules about that, and uh, design expression <coughs> on what you have to do to design the, the transfer zone. Also the fact that you have to model, make a 3D model with all elements of the transfer zone and under, so that uh, your calculation is correct. And uh, at present it's mentioned that there may be more than one transfer zone in a building. Uh, there are rule, the rules for masonry in field frames have been uh, increased, widened, to cover more things. There are rules for design with model of the bare frame only, like at present. Design with model of the interaction between frame and infill, analysis of out of plane actual effect on infill, design at uh, significant damage limit state of column adjacent to infill in steel, concrete, or composite, and design of interacting in infill at significant damage uh, limit state. There are rules for non interacting, non -interacting infills in plane, out of plane and data for nonlinear analysis of frames with interacting ill fields. Uh, structures with claddings, there are there, this is new. So 
rules for the analysis applicable to all systems, so with isostatic arrangement of all panel connections in all ductility classes, integrated panels, so participating into the structural strengths, <coughs> and non-dissipative panel connections in DC1, DC2, integrated panel and dissipative panels in DC3, rules for claddings applicable to all types with the different type of uh, connections and uh, also we have that for interacting claddings. And there are also rules for partitions of the analysis and for uh, resistance. Uh, now we go chapter by material by chapter by material. Um, not so, so, so as to be able to fly fast over these chapters, uh, I must first mention that all chapters by material contain material definition, basis of design, table, structure type, ductility class, behavior factor, another table, structure type, ductility class, limit of uh, seismic action index, Another table, structural type, limits of interstellar drift at uh, significant damage, and then, of course, a set of rules per structural type. Uh, concrete buildings. So I will just point out these things which are new. So this is the table of uh, behavior factor components and global maximum reference behavior factor. A uh, table of limits of seismic action as delta, pair, uh, structure type and ductility class, limit of interstory drift, not a table because there is a single value for all types. Uh, then the chapter contains detailing and design expression plus tables which help and facilitate the life of designers, for instance, these tables of uh, minimum longitudinal reinforcement ratio, maximum longitudinal ratio, diameter of bars, etc. So there, are, uh, there, has a, there is an effort to, let's say, facilitate life by giving more practical tools. Um, rules for moment resisting frames. Well, the idea is to design. Uh, so that bending, uh, the ultimate limit state in bending takes place before ultimate limit state in shear. Now, depending on the position of the plastic hinges, either in the beam or in the columns, there are different uh, expression of equilibrium, and then uh, one has to manage uh, this condition. Design action effects in Callum, so you find here this amplification factor and the fact that the plus means plus or minus and you have to consider both in the evaluation of the strengths in bending considering the interaction. Uh, the effective widths of flat have been revised, there are rules for beams uh, supporting discontinued columns or walls in case of transfer zone, and in this history you have the weak beam strong column rule. For the detailing in DC2 and DC3, <coughs> well, there are improved rules and uh, much improved uh, drawings, and you have here some of these drawings. Uh, concrete walls, the new thing is that there is a different expression of, for the magnification of shear forces in walls. This is a result of research uh, projects. So the expression of the amplification factor for shear is there. And in DC2, where it used to be 1.5 as a standard value, it's now 2. So it's still easy, but let's say make you uh, reinforce more for shear. Ductile walls, uh, there is a discussion not finished about the contribution of the term on uh, shear resistance of concrete to design shear resistance. Then some detailing rules and drawings. Uh, revised rules for the 
large, lightly reinforced concrete walls, now called large walls. Um, rules for anchorages and crises, revised rules, revised drawings. Uh, there is a new section on uh, flat slab structure with a concept of support strips developed uh, with the differentiation of moment transmitted or not to the column and there, is, there are prescriptions for control perimeter, flexural reinforcement, shear resistance, punch in shear uh, resistance. So this was a request in the contract we received from SEN that the flat slab would be explicitly treated. And uh, so some more of flat slabs about some integrity reinforcement against uh, progressive columns, which you see there. Concrete building, there is some words about uh, the case of pre-stressed concrete. There was nothing. Uh, the rule for precast concrete have been totally revised. Uh, providing some drawing, uh, different, making a difference between different types of connections, full strengths, partial strengths. Um, the fact um, that the analysis, uh, let's say, must be modeled to reflect higher vibration modes. Diaphragms may be flexible, but then have, be, have to be in the model. Uh, some words about assessment of connections and then there is a complete annex on dual connections so the type of connections which have been observed to fail in a real earthquake now there are two pages of normative annex telling you how to deal with the dual connections where beams are supported on two brackets of columns um, now this is a table of behavior factor for uh, precast concrete, so it, because there are many possible types, we try to cover all. And then finally, data for pushover, in principle, are present or will be present in all chapters by material. And now secondary elements may yield, which was not the case in the current Euro code. But then you have to make a deformation, a check on deformation capacity. Steel buildings, so this is uh, the gamma OV now called gamma RM. Uh, there are strain hardening coefficient gamma SH, uh, which to some extent frightened some people in the uh, <coughs> commission, the committee SC8. But, uh, in fact, the values are there. Um, behavior factors and in function of ductility classes. Uh, limits of seismic action index in different class for different type of structures. And then rules. Well, you now know this uh, meta. I sent it in. There is erratic values of uh, limits of uh, industrial drift. There is an extension of the formula for theta for the P-delta effect. And then there are rules for column splices with an annex on pre-qualified connections. Um, there is, this is the table of this uh, omega force, force magnification factor. So what's is there? Um, table relating uh, behavior factor and uh, slant classes of sections for elements in compression and bending have been revised based on literature review. Um, so, we being from Calum in DC3 only, requirement for connection capacity, demonstration may be made by test, and there is an annex on testing in uh, the draft or by tests uh, from the literature, if tests have been done in agreement with this annex, or by compliance, complying to an annex on pre-qualified connections. Calum vein joints, there are, this, is, was, this did not exist, the check against lateral torsional backlinks of beams. And 
uh, what to do when there is a distance between plastic hinge to carbon nexus. This is <coughs> on concent concentrically braced frames. Um, <coughs> Tension only design is allowed only in DC2 for X and X split bracings with this limitation of lambda bar. DC2 and DC3 frame with tension compression diagonal, the limit is only this one. So you have you, you are allowed to consider the contribution also of the compression compressed diagonal to the strength of the brace system. Specific rules for top story bracing. The, the rule on homogeneity of diagonal over strength is kept, but now it bears on the backlink strengths of the diagonals and not the plastic strengths. And then explicit rules for brace connections, bin to column connection, column base, and an opening to dissipative connections. Something new again, uh, the case in which backlink refrain, refrain sorry, top, top, Backlink restraint braces are used. So there is a set of rules considering this uh, new type of steel device. Uh, criteria for the tension compression adjustment factor and so on. So this is covered. Eccentrically braced frame um, extension to box sections. And plus rules to prevent premature brace buckling before link rotation t reaches value. Plus rule on the influence of link over strengths of axial strengths and catenary action in light deformation. Uh, dual frames, there are <coughs> provisions also for recentering capacity. New thing, lightweight steel systems are used. It did not exist in the, it does not exist in the current Euro code. It was not even mentioned that this could exist, so that the limit by ignorance was the most severe one, Q equal 1.5 PGA 0.1 G. So it is known now that this system behave well and much over uh, the, the limits which I mentioned, so the new values, Q2.5, limit as delta 5 meter per square second, so doubled, and 7.5, so triple in DC2, and no limit in DC3. Complete set of new rule detailing, three types of system, with diagonals, with steel sheeting, with wood sheeting, then the rules for the design in DC1, DC2, DC3. The yielding takes place in the panel connections. There are also rules for steel diaphragm, transfer zone, and control of design and the supply of material and lubrication. Uh, composite steel concrete was harshly criticized by the uh, systematic review comments. Much too complicated, entire section to be revised, etc. Um, so this was done. Deleting some possible choice which were mentioned there. Uh, deleting uh, this uh, complicated explanation about slap reinforcement around calent in moment resisting frames. So now it's simplified. Only ductile uh, reinforcement may be used. Effective widths were a case of complicated tables. Uh, there has been sensitivity studies by the working group two, concluding that for analysis we can use the uh, Eurocode 4 values and for resistance the table which is provided but in a simplified version. Uh, the rules for slenderness of walls of profiles have been much improved by reference to uh, literature and code uh, existing at present. The shear stat strength reduction and the cyclic loading, well, the coefficient was 7.75, it's now no reduction. Uh, and partial strength connections are covered, and there are rules for CBF, EBF, and walls. Uh, so, rapidly, limit of seismic action per substructural type and activity classes, uh, behavior factors. Uh, there are those of steel, except for some uh, specific uh, 
types which are covered in the table and not in Steve. Uh, limits of drift and then the values of slenderness. And we skip to timber. Um, completely revised section addressing explicitly different types of structural systems. So you, you see the pictures of them. Um, rules for DC1, DC2, DC3. Design strengths of dissipative zone expressed in this, ex this expression. And, uh, well, explanation of the parameters. Explanation of capacity design rules with this uh, uh, design resistance. And then the behavior factors for the different timber systems, uh, the limits of drift and S delta. And then uh, going further, as you know, to the the fact is that in timber structure dissipation takes place in the connections, so there are more rules about the dissipation in connections uh, with requirement on the ductility mu as it comes out of testing done through an Euronorm 121252. Uh, uh, and so the values of mu are explicit. And then uh, dedicated rules per type and ductility class, plus a number of wonderful drawings, uh, I can say. So some are here, uh, sorry. Some more. So it's a dream come true. Um, and then an annex uh, explaining um, how to derive load deformation relationship for nonlinear analysis on the basis of experimental curve uh, made uh, according to the uh, adequate Euronome. Now on masonry, I would say as far as I know, because the latest draft arrived one day ago, um, there are two design classes, DC1, DC2. DC1, the low limit is S delta equal to 3. So yours used to be 2.5, I would say. Objective box behavior, and then the definition of different behavior factors in the different table which are here corresponding to type of construction, building characteristics, and uh, masonry block types. Um, it is prescribed in DC2 that diaphragm uh, must be stiff in tension and compression in two directions. Rules are given for analysis, linear and non-linear analysis. Design checks at damage limitation and near collapse are proposed. So this is not the case in the other chapters. Design checks for in-plane and out-of-plane and then rules per masonry type, so uh, unreinforced, confined, or reinforced uh, masonry, with uh, values of ultimate deformation of the different types of uh, walls, uh, which are given in the table there. And then there are the rules for uh, DC, for these so-called simple buildings. New again, a chapter on aluminium buildings. Um, two design, two ductility classes, DC1, DC2. And then a list of the aluminium alloys which are uh, agreed for DC2 design. So they are given on the, on the table here. Then the rules for this, the buildings, the definition of the behavior factor components and behavior factor, the drift limit, the limit of uh, seismic action, and then the rules for uh, non-dissipative members where you find this uh, omega factor uh, which is given in the table here depending on the structure type, rules for the design of connections, 
and then uh, the rules for these typologies of structures well, a set of rules is provided, uh, I would say, similar to what uh, the rules for steel. The list of annex, I already mentioned uh, some of them. So I mentioned this one, cyclic test, this one, dual connections, design of join in steel structure, lightweight structure with more rule, more. Huh? Composite connection, com composite column made connection, design of slab steel concrete, composite beam at beam column joint. This is this existed or this exists already, uh, but is uh, improved and uh, clarified, I would say. And then the load deformation relationship for steel and composite, so that you can run pushover analysis. The same uh, for timber, and then the derivation of drift limit for masonry walls uh, and spandrel from experimental tests. And there may be more. I will not. Um, I mean more annexes. Some words about uh, where do we stand. So this week will be sent the provisory final draft. 31st of October, next month, the final draft. From 1st November to 31st January, final draft examined by National Mirror Committees, which will send comments and proposals. Then three months for PT2 to take into account these comments and prepare the so-called final document. Sent to send on 31st April. And then all background documents, because there will be background to many things, background documents to many things decided within the code. And then 1st of July, we go on holiday. <laughs> um, so this concludes my presentation, but like all in all good movies, uh, just the cast of PT2. So the, here are the different person uh, who participate to PT2 activity with their, let's say, greatest uh, field of expertise. So in their discussion which are horizontal uh, for all materials. So these are the, the people. So thank you for all, all your attention. <laughs>